Hey guys, so today I've got a 2000 Jeep Cherokee uh, XJ. Uh, we're going to be putting on Rough Country's, uh, I think it's a three inch or three and a half inch lift. Uh, I went with the full kit, it's front coil springs, full rear leaf springs, not the Ada leaf, uh, as well as the front lower control arms uh, so we can keep the suspension geometry as close to stock as possible. It makes for a better ride. Um, you don't have to worry about alignment issues, stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to try to walk you through the step-by-steps to add this lift kit to this Jeep. It's relatively straightforward. It's really just unbolt the old stuff, bolt in the new. Uh, being a 2000 and an off-road vehicle in the Northeast, uh, I'm probably going to run into some uh, stuck bolts. Um, but I'm going to open up the kit. I'll show you guys the kit, see what kind of hardware comes with it and everything. Um, so that I won't be so worried about breaking bolts or having to cut stuff off. Um, so yeah, uh, before we get started though, don't forget, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, leave me a comment below and hit that notification bell. So every time I post a new video, you'll get notified. And um, yeah, that's it. I want to thank everyone that's been following and subscribing so far. But uh, let's get to it. So here's the kit. As you can see, new front coil springs, new rear leaf springs. Uh, again, this is not the Edel Leaf kit, uh, so I opted for the brand new leaf springs. That way, I had all new bushings and such. Um, I've always noticed that the uh, ride quality is a little bit better when you uh, do a leaf pack instead of just the Edel Leaf. Uh, but that's just from my own experience. I'm sure other vehicles other manufacturers are slightly different uh, but the kit does come with brand new shocks front and rear uh, with the proper length for the uh, lift uh, new lower control arms and I can tell you these things are these are hefty <laughs> I mean these feel heavy but again they have new bushings in them so I don't have to worry about the bushings and it comes with all new hardware that I need to install the rear leafs uh, as well as the brackets to drop the front sway bar. Uh, I will have to reuse some of the shock uh, lower hardware, uh, but other than that, uh, it comes with you know basically all the new hardware you need. Uh, well, uh, I will have to reuse the the hardware that holds the leaf springs into the vehicle on the shackles, uh, but you know I have new U bolts to mount the axle to the leaf springs. Um, Let's see, besides that, I think the only other thing that I am maybe concerned with, uh, and I might add afterwards, is um, I might see if they have a track bar uh, drop bracket, or relocation bracket, I should say, because when you, lift the, when you lift a vehicle, especially a solid axle vehicle that uses a track bar, It'll actually shift the axle to one side when you lift it down because the axle's, the track bar is mounted to one side of the frame rail, the other side of the axle, and just by dropping it, it's going to pull it over. So I'm probably going to look into getting that uh, relocation bracket and or an adjustable track bar. Um, the other thing that might be of concern is the drive shaft angles. Not necessarily the angles on this, but uh, the slip yoke. Uh, coming out of the transfer case. Uh, this is also easily remedied by just lowering the transfer case. And I know for a lot of Jeeps they sell uh, kits that just uh, basically drop the rear of the, the uh, transmission so the transfer case drops with it. Um, otherwise you get some weird vibrations on deceleration or acceleration or with the slip yoke you can get a vibration out of that too. So. Uh, these are two things that you probably want to make sure you get in your kit. Uh, if you can't afford them right away, uh, I would highly recommend them. So, um, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off all the wheels. And I'm probably going to start in the front. Um, we'll get that, that uh, kit going first. It's a little more involved, I'd say. I don't know. Um, 
But before I do that, I'm probably gonna spray the bolts that I need to reuse on the rear uh, leaf springs, the big bolts that are going through the springs and into the shackles. All right, before I got started, I wanted to check to see what the ride height is. So I just got a tape measure, I'm trying to intersect the center of the wheel, right to the floor, to the fender. Looks like this one's about 31 inches in the front. Uh, I don't have any pressure on the lift right now. It's down on the suspension weight. Um, let's see what the rear is. Intersect the wheel. Uh, looks like 30 and three quarter ish, or maybe 30 and five eighths. So the rear is definitely a little lower than the front, uh, but I guess you know it's sort of to be expected. Uh, like I said, this is a 2000, so you're talking about a 21 year old vehicle. Um, you know, that's a lot of a lot of miles on uh, on a spring. I think this thing has a hundred and this have 100 and. 29,000 miles. So I guess it's not a lot of miles for Jeep, but uh, you know, just the age, uh, a lot of that metal starting to fatigue, so things are sagging. So it'd be interesting to see what this lift kit uh, brings it up to. So I'm pretty sure not only is it going to raise it to three, three and a half inches, but it's also going to level it. Um, so I just wanted to have a good baseline before we started that so we could see where it was. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to try to explain anything I see that might be key points. Uh, a lot of it is just removal and then reinstallation. So uh, I think what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to disconnect the sway bar from the frame uh, and then take it off of the sway bar end links, take the end link off down here. I'm going to remove them fully because I'm going to replace them. Um, I'm also replacing the lower control arms, so I'm going to remove those bolts. Uh, there is a spring retaining bolt on the bottom of the coil spring. We have to remove that so we can get the coil spring out. Um, from there, it's really just a matter of um, loosening the bolt on top of the front shock absorber and removing the two lower bolts on the shock absorber. We're going to reuse those. Um, but that's pretty much it. So, you know, I'm probably just going to fast forward a lot of this. Um, you know, you guys can stop, pause, whatever you have to do to see what I may be doing. Um, but that's why I, th I figured it would be easier just to kind of explain to you what I'm going to be removing here and why I'm removing it. Uh, I am going to be replacing the bump stops. As you can see, there's nothing here. So I have a set of um, uh, urethane bump stops uh, that I'll cut to length. Um, you know, because I'm only putting a three inch lift on here. I'm not going very far, but the fact the factory. Uh, factory or original ones here are missing. Um, so I'm going to be adding them back and I'm going to be cutting them just so there is something here for a bump stop. So I'm going to start with sway bar. Uh, I'm probably going to remove the lower control arms next and I'm going to leave the shocks for last because they are going to hold my axle in place uh, while I do this. You know, there, there is still spring tension here so there's force pushing down. If I took this out, the axle is just going to fall down. And unless you have something to support it, uh, you know, if I'm working on a lift. So, you know, for me, I don't have a lift jack stand. I'm probably going to bring it closer to the ground, use a jack itself uh, to lower the axle down so I can remove the springs and replace the shock absorbers. I'm going to do probably one side at a time so I'm not fighting with the axle. Um, once I have that, uh, I'm going to start putting things all back where they go. So things are probably going to change as I start taking it apart. Um, but again, it's really just remove old parts, put on new parts. So uh, here we go.
All right, so I've got a jack. All right, so I've got a jack underneath the pumpkin of the rear differential. I've got the lower control arms out. I've got the sway bar disconnected. I've also got the bracket uh, that was here that holds uh, the bottom of the coil spring. I still have the shock bolts down here attached. Uh, the reason why is I'm gonna to try to use some of the uh, axle weight so I can get this top nut off because there's not a lot of clearance between the brake master cylinder and that area there. So I can't easily get my impact gun on there which normally would just kind of blow it off real fast. You don't have to worry about holding that top uh, uh, flat spots on the uh, shock itself. So I'm hoping that with the weight of the axle I can get this to drop down. Uh, the reason why I have the jack there is, like I said, this coil spring is still under tension. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to do this without having to put spring compressors on. Uh, I think I should have enough room that I can safely lower it down and get the, the spring uh, tension off of it and get it out. It might be a little more difficult to get the new longer spring in, but I'll worry about that when we get there. So I'm just going to try to take this off here now. Okay, I've got the top bolt off. Like I said, I'm gonna to try to work one side at a time. Uh, we'll see if it is even feasible, you know, like I said, because the new coil spring is a lot longer than this one. Uh, but now I should be able to lower the axle down with my jack. Let's see here. You can see the shocks coming out, so you know I'm coming down. It looks like that's all I get. But, I think if I push down on the axle, I should be able to kind of pop this guy over uh, and out. But again, it's making me wonder if I can't get in the new longer one. So, I might take the other side off just so I can get a little more articulation out of the axle. Uh, but first, let me see if I can just pry this side out. All right, I was able to pry it out. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I'm gonna be able to get the new one in, but before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to uh, unbolt the lower shock since I'm replacing it. Uh, I went ahead and I just kind of quickly wire brushed the pocket where the, um, where the spring seats. Uh, I mean, if you want, this would be a good time to really clean it up well. Maybe put a little pour 15 on it, some kind of rust inhibitor, you know, uh, paint it, something along those lines. Uh, I'm not going that crazy with this. I just wanted to make sure all the dirt and dust was out of it, just so the new spring seats in there nicely. Um, I'm going to put the bump stop in right away. So I'm going to measure up for the bump stop, cut it to length, try to get it installed, and then we're going to put the spring in, and then I'm going to move over to the other side. Uh, hopefully uh, everything goes together nicely. So these are the bump stops I'm going to use. Like I said, they're uh, urethane, they're extended bump stops. You can pretty much cut them to whatever length you need. Um, I'm not exactly sure what size tire they're going to run on this yet. Um, but a, So I'm probably going to cut them you know, maybe an inch longer than stock. Not exactly sure yet. Uh, I'm going to do some measuring here and I'll try to uh, let you guys know in the description exactly what I went with. Uh, but this is what I'm going to install into the, the front cup here on both sides. Uh, that way there's some sort of bump stop here again. Okay, just wanted to show the differences in the new lifting coils to the old coil. Uh, when you look at them side by side, they look like it's not much longer, but there's actually two more coils on the new lift kit coil. So each coil is contributing to weight lift. So that's probably what's holding it up. But I'm thinking because this is not much more, uh, I should be able to sneak it in just the same way I snuck out the old one. So I guess we'll find out. 
uh, right away, I'm gonna show the bump stops I had, I used because I had them laying around. Uh, I had them from an old XJ, XJ project? I don't even remember what it was. Uh, it was from a Wrangler. So the diameter was a little bit bigger than what's on this Cherokee. What I did was, uh, on my belt sander, I just kind of turned it down after I made some measurements. So I got the right diameter and then I cut a groove into it again. Uh, so it snaps in here so it won't come out. Uh, and then overall length, I uh, these are extended lengths. I cut one of the spacings off uh, to get a length that I think it's probably okay for this right now. You know, this is again a mild lift. It's not much longer than what the factory bump stop is, but I wanted something there. So I just wanted to point that out in case you know somebody notices uh, the bump stops I showed and then says, well, these won't fit. So I just want you to know that I had to modify these quite a bit in diameter to get them to fit. Uh, I don't remember, the, for whatever reason, I was working in millimeters, so I think I took like um, a total of 10 millimeters off of the overall diameter. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a bit. But I just wanted you guys to see. Uh, the other thing I did was, right away, I took off the other shock from the top because I wanted to have a little more room to be able to push the axle down to try to get each spring in. But I think I'm at the point now where I can start getting these coil springs in and we can start reassembling. Okay, new bump stops in, which you need to put in before you put in the coils because you won't get them in any other way. Uh, I sprayed them down with a little silicone spray and then with just a heavy hammer, gave them a nice jolt to get them into um, the grooves there that hold them into place. Uh, I did have to take both shocks off of both sides so I can articulate the axle so I can get the spring in on both sides. Uh, I want to point out, make sure that when you get these in, you see this one's a little off, I'm going to have to straighten it, but um, you want the spring to be sitting in the pocket um, on both sides. They should be sitting in this keyed spot before you put the retaining strap back on. Um, so you can see the other side just the same. So this one sits, it's a little dark over here, I'm sorry for that, but it sits in the groove over there and then the strap uh, is also on the back on that same side. Um, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my shocks to the lower point at least on both sides and then I'm probably going to try to get the lower control arms in and then swing this axle back up so I can get the shock back up into the upper shock mount and that should hold the axle where I need it to be. Um, I am going to have to check yet to see that the track bar um, may or may not need to be replaced. And I spoke to a couple of Jeep guys and they said, you know, it's usually so subtle that you don't really need to worry about it. But I think I'm, either way I'm going to recommend an adjustable track bar for this thing. Um, I don't like having to drill the hole um, to relocate this, but you know, if the guy doesn't want to go for a track bar and it's far off, I might have to just you know, drill a hole over slightly just to get the axle back position uh, correctly left or right. So, let me get those next bit of parts in and then I'll touch back. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so, like I said, I'm kind of trying to sort this out uh, with the instructions that come with it. They're pretty generic, I guess. Um, but uh, I just want to let you guys know where I'm at right now. So far I've got the springs in, I've got both shock absorbers out. Uh, I needed to take both out so I can get the axle to sort of move around so I get the springs in uh, without having to use a spring compressor. Uh, I think at this point it'd probably be easier to try to get the new lower control arms in before I put the shocks so I'm not also fighting the shocks. Um, Right now, the way the axle's drooped, and with the spring pressure, it's sort of pushed back, if that makes sense, right? The axle's moving like this. Um, so I might have to sort of get the either the, the control arm on the axle or on the chassis, and then sort of jack it up and push it out of the way. Uh, I might try to use a ratchet strap to, to 
to pull it uh, forward. But uh, in my opinion, this is what I'm going to put on next. Uh, you don't have to follow this. Again, it's you know we're taking stuff off or putting new stuff on. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, bushing grease on these before I install them, so I don't get any kind of squeaks or creaks out of this. Um, these aren't anything fancy, they're still rubber bushings, but I want to put something on here so they're not just going in dry. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, so just as I suspected, uh, the track bar is holding the axle sort of, let's say, it's holding it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbolt the track bar because I'm going to have to uh, replace it, uh, drop it, extend it, something. Um, I need to get the axle over so I can get the control arms in their right position. So right now I'm sort of fighting the track bar. So I'm going to just remove it right now so we can get everything sort of recentered. Um, Obviously, right now the axle is at full droop. It's not going to be like this once the weight of the vehicle is on. But just the nature of a solid axle and a track bar like that is, you know, you have the fixed point to the chassis, you have the other point to the axle. So you get this sort of arc like this. So if the vehicle is sitting here, that axle is doing this as it's coming down. So that's you know, as you lift an axle, you're, you're essentially shifting it over. So you'll have more wheels showing on the driver's side than you do on the passenger side, which is why you need um, to either move the positioning here or a drop bracket on the top there or an adjustable track bar. So you can literally lengthen the bar, get the axle recentered where it needs to be. Uh, but keep in mind, you should really set that at right height uh, because the axle full droop, it is going to move that way. Same thing as, as, it, as it goes up, it's going to move the opposite way, right? Because your the arc is just going up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this right now so I can get the other lower control arm in, uh, and then we'll just keep going from there. Try to slow down the video when that bolt finally came out. You can see the axle sort of snap back. Uh, the other control arm went right in now. Uh, so, yeah, even this bolt now fits perfect. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get these other control arms in. I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my new front shock absorbers in, uh, get the retaining clips installed for the, the leaf spray. Uh, coil springs uh, and that's pretty much everything in the front lift so from there we're going to move to the rear um, and get those rear leaf springs in again though I'm going to have to come up with a solution for this front track bar uh, you know you can you can drill a new relocation hole again I don't really like doing that I'm going to make sure with the customer see uh, if I can't try to sell them the track bar at the very least, I'm thinking I might have to drill a hole for now, uh, and then when they get more money, uh, you know, get the adjustable track bar in here. Uh, but as soon as I know what they want to do, uh, I'll let you guys know, and I'll let you know how I go about doing it. But uh, I'm going to finish putting it up the front, and then we're going to move into the rear.